Alright guys, welcome back to Modern Brown Men, episode 12. Uh, we got a special guest for you guys today. Um, this one, Mook's been looking forward to this yeah. one. <laughs> the whole week, he's like, bro, this is going to be a good podcast. Yeah. He's like, I can't wait. So, ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause for Shafraz Dosa, uh, yeah. born and raised in Edmonton. Um, you know, we thought for a younger audience out there, he would be a perfect uh, guest to bring on. Um, our mantra that we have on our podcast has been preaching about how to level yourself up in all aspects of life, whether it comes to business venture, whether it comes to your personal life, uh, whether it comes to, um, you know, mental, physical, and how to really put yourself out there. And really, if you have your mindset to accomplish what you want, you can. And so, you know, Shafraz, introduce yourself to everybody and, uh, you know, give us a little background of uh, who you are and, um, you know, uh, what your come up was. Sure. Thanks, guys. Honestly, it's it's great to be here. It's my first video podcast, surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's uh, good to pop my cherry here and I really appreciate you guys making the time. Yep. Uh, for me, honestly, I... We can get through this, but you can see I do quite a bit. Yeah. Um, it, but it didn't come easy. You know, this was this yeah. was a process. This was a lot of trial and error, um, and and a lot of failures along the way. Yeah. But you know, nothing that you see today came without without trying. So happy to get into that. Um, you know, I'm 35 years old, born and raised in Edmonton, Alberta. Parents came from East Africa, uh, Nairobi, Kenya, Zanzibar, that area. Yep. So they came to Edmonton early 80s. And then, uh, yeah, I was born in 88. So born and raised Northside Edmontonian. <laughs> uh, started in Clairview, actually. Started in Clairview. Yeah. And then went over to Matbury uh, and then moved to downtown Edmonton. Uh, I'd say, well, I started in Saskatchewan Drive uh, not too long ago. And then I moved into my next condo just by the River Valley uh, about two years ago now. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, loving that space and, and just really love our city. You know, everyone complains about Edmonton. They call it <laughs> yeah. Edmonton. And I think it's a baby. I think that there's so much opportunity here. Yeah. And it's all about what you make it. So I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to be building everything that I've been working on for so long here in our city mm. um, and not think that this is this and this doesn't have the great potential that it does. Yeah. And then what you kind of um, touched on is the potential in Edmonton. Because thing is, it's such an untapped market in all facet i don't all facet of markets mm -hmm. and you know and we'll go through some of the business venture that you go to and and you can people can kind of get inspired by how much need in every industry there is for entrepreneurs to take advantage mm -hmm. and actually grow in your hometown hometown base if you build from there it's only up from there the yeah. reason why if when you have the local business behind you and you have the local community from edmonton a kid who's born and raised here Man, from there, the growth is exponentially grows from there. Because yeah. now the people see you, they're like, you didn't just go chase after the market. You grew your own market mm -hmm. in the city where you saw potential and saw the uniqueness that you could present to it mm -hmm. and flourish in it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. And I, and I agree with that completely. I, I've always been a strong believer in, you know, t taking back to your roots. I think that it's so easy to say, Edmonton doesn't have the potential. Edmonton doesn't have the opportunity. People leave Edmonton. Either they go to Calgary, Toronto, Vancouver. Yep. They seek out uh, opportunities elsewhere. But I love our city. And I think that there's once you uh, realize that there is a ton of potential here and you dedicate yourself to your own growth in your own city, it, it's uncapped. Yep. Mm. And people who are either business owners here or people who you work with, and they see that you're you're giving back to your city or you're wanting to put in the extra work to your own city, they'll want to work with you. Um, and I've seen that in, in my own ventures. And anytime I either seek a client out or want to work with somebody or put myself out there, they realize that I'm trying to better my own city and better myself in the place that I was born. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that maybe come into our city and try to do things that maybe I'm doing. Yeah. But uh, there is a lot of I'd say more favor towards somebody who's Edmonton born and want to, you know, help the city grow. Yeah. And then, you know, as one of your business venture that we, you know, um, I kind of looked up was uh, Curate, your uh, your um, marketing agency. Mm. And, you know, the, and we talked about this right before we started the pod. You have that, you know, you're exclusive to your client. Mm. You're not just going in that niche. Be like, okay, let's get 10 of the dental clinics and let's get, let's run it up. So, you know, walk me through the process of 
how that actually helps you grow and what that actually means and what Curate is all about. Yeah. So, yeah, as we mentioned before the podcast started, I am exclusive to the clients that I work with in their industry. So just take, taking a step back, Curate Collective Media Agency was, was founded by me in August of 2020 mm. when the, we were in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah. And I just realized companies needed a digital voice in, in probably the worst time for businesses. Uh, you know, I had created the company when I was a licensed mortgage broker working for uh, actually independent at the time. But then I merged my company with with KB Capital and kind of joined forces with them and helped relaunch the residential division. Okay. An amazing KB Capital. I, I love the people there. I'm no longer with them. I moved over to Legacy Mortgages now, uh, which I can talk about. But I created the the need for telling people's stories in a very professional and engaging way at the worst time in in their lives yeah so i i found that there was a need for that immediately and august 2020 is when we started and it was a really interesting story because i had always had a passion for telling stories and i'm never going to be the guy behind the camera yeah. like all the power to the guys being behind the camera <laughs> and editing yeah. and you know they have an amazing skill set I have a skill set when it comes to sales, business development, creating strategies, um, you know, being the producer. So I can connect the dots with everybody. Mm -hmm. But then I also have the skill set of compartmentalizing the right people for the job to execute. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it all started with uh, Porsche Edmonton actually reaching out to me and saying, hey, we have the, the new Taycan. The Taycan just launched at the time mm -hmm. and it was a $250,000 electric vehicle. And they yeah. said, hey, you know, you can you can test it out for us for the weekend. And I said, I'll do one better for you. I'll create a commercial for free. So I put together a team. Uh, it was, I think I got the call on a Tuesday and we had the car on a Friday, put together a team in, in a matter of a few days and we shot a commercial uh, and it got so much attention that the CEO of Porsche Canada reached out to us, asked to publish our photos in his annual magazine. Um, the, the feedback that we received, they were telling us that this is a, a $50,000 commercial. That's we did it in uh, 24 hours. <laughs> wow. We had it edited on a Monday, the yeah. following Monday. Yeah. Um, and it got a lot of attention. So I realized, you know what, I, I have the ability to put together a great team to create great projects. And it started with creating content for luxury vehicles. And then from there, uh, a lot of people in my network, and you know, I'm, I'm 35 now, I started working after graduating uh, around 21. Yep. So been growing my personal brand for almost 15 years. Um, and so I had a lot of network and, and brand equity behind my name. So as soon as I started saying, I'm doing videos, I'm doing content, people wanted to, to use me. Yep. So we started doing branding videos and marketing videos for anyone that would say, hey, we need help. Mm -hmm. And I was just a yes man. I had that yes man mentality. Half the time, I didn't know what I was doing. I yeah. would just say, you know what? I'll say yes to that and I'll figure it out later. Yeah. And that's always been my, my mindset. And from the August 2020 till today, we've worked with over 55 Alberta-based companies. Wow. And they range from the Oilers to City of Edmonton to Edmonton Valley Zoo to law firms like Juris Corp and James H. Brown and ophthalmology clinics and doctors. And, and so, you know... We, I've been very lucky to work with just a handful of amazing clients that have been loyal to me over the past two and a half years, three years, but also just diversify my portfolio with so many different industries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think the main thing you kind of touched upon is understanding what your role is within a company. Because as you said, there's people that are professionals that do the behind the camera yeah. and understanding your role, I feel like is key to maintaining a business that stays afloat and flourishes because the main thing you see a lot of the time is the ego trips that people go on. You know, I want to be that A1. I got to be the man. Mm. But you don't have to, you can succeed by my side yeah. as long as we have the mindset of what we're trying to achieve as a collective group. Right. So walk me through that. Like, I know you have a team that you work with at the agency. So how do you guys like, you know, put aside that ego, be like, no, we're not in it for ourselves. We're mm. in it for as a collective group to build something that's bigger yeah. than us. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's, I think the first step to that is having a crew that respects everyone in the crew, but we're also all friends. Mm -hmm. You know, we started out independently and they still, I have a team that are incredibly talented, guys like Jed Lim and Cassian and Justin and my social media manager, Jordan, um, Bryce, uh, our editor, Nick, they're all incredibly talented individually yeah. and they all do their work individually. But when I call upon them to do a project with me, they do put priority on that. They also understand that they're going to get consistent work from me. So I think there's no ego there because, you know, I have 
no, they're, they're not on salary. They're all contractors of mine, but they all do their own work independently. They're all very successful independently. Yeah. But collectively, we are stronger. And that's why I came up with the name Curate Collective, because we're, we're curating marketing and branding projects, but collectively, it's a group. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we can't do it without each other. I'm really skilled at what I do, and they're skilled at what they do. So collectively, we, we really can do anything. And we've, we work with such a, a diverse group of clients. Um, we've won projects over media companies like Bell Media and CTV Edmonton and Global. And I've competed against producers who have 40 years of experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what I bring to the table is just this fresh, younger look. And also a team that's younger and have unique ideas. Whereas, not to knock on you know the the, the bigger corporate companies, but they're you know, they have older uh, demographic and they may not have the ideas that we have. So, if I've always felt that if I can get my foot in the door, I mean I could sell anything. Yeah. But I've been building that skill set since I was twenty one. Exactly. So the, there is no ego because we just we all love what we do. We're all passionate, but we're all friends at the end of the day. Yeah, and I think the main thing you said that stands out is that corporate structure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because when it comes to corporate brand, they, they have a bottom line. Yeah, They have to reach that and that's it. So they lose out on the cre- creativeness through that process because now the only thing they're looking at is we have to hit this quota yeah. or there's going to be firings, there's this, there's that. Yeah. But with you guys, you guys have that, you know, that, um, that difference in the creative aspect of that process. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think that's what differentiates you from, as you said, the producers that are have been in the game for the past 40 years. But guess what? The creativeness, they might have it, but they're coming from an aspect of your mom probably if you don't get this done by this time, like like obviously you gotta have that timeline in your for friend, sure. but that's different. But as you said, it's just that structuring of, you know, how you guys work is completely different. And that's yeah. what differentiates you guys from your competitors. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been and I've been mentored by an amazing man here in Edmonton, uh, Jared Smith, who has had his own marketing agency for 20 plus years. And he's taught me that you can be a fractional advisor or fractional. I call myself a fractional brand manager, or fractional chief brand officer yeah. for multiple companies. And we are able to pass on savings to our clients because we don't have the infrastructure like an expensive office. Yeah. I don't have expensive salaries to pay. You know, that that model is dead, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and agencies that have those models, that have that fancy downtown office, that have multiple salaries on payroll, that have all these extra expenses, they're passing on those expenses to the client. Exactly. So we're saving all of our clients a ton of money. You know, coming from the corporate world for, for so many years, I understand that you're paying someone X amount of salary for a marketing manager role, that marketing manager is saying to, to, to his or her boss, what's my marketing budget for the year? Or what's my advertising budget for the year? So not only are you paying a salary, then you're paying a budget to get people like us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're cutting out the middleman for a, a marketing manager or you know someone on staff versus just coming directly to us. And we've been able to create a model that that's cost effective that's also time effective too. We, exactly. you know, we we understand our clients are incredibly busy, so we spend on average, in person, physically, twenty four to forty hours max per month. Mm-hmm. We create all the content, we strategize with them, and then we're out of their hair. Yeah. And we're making all the content kind of behind the scenes, editing everything, creating the, the social media calendar, and it just becomes a well oiled machine that they don't have to worry about, about it. it. Exactly. So, and as I said before, what's really unique about Curate Collective is ethically, when I started this, I told myself I would never work with another company in the same industry. Industry, Mm. So we work with one lawyer in his specific industry, work with one ophthalmologist, we work with one doctor. Uh, And when I tell them we're exclusive to them in their industry, it's it's a guaranteed sold. Because Mm -hmm. it's it's rare to have that. Most agencies in the city will take as many clients as they They possibly can. Of course, they have to pay their salaries and their, their, their expenses. For us, we're, we're lean. We want to go after uh, quality versus quantity. Mm-hmm. And that's just ethically, I feel that's just the better business model. Yeah, uh, it's very rare. I haven't really heard of any other agency doing that. Um, they're really going after as many clients as possible. Yeah. yeah. And I think because, you know, your differentiation in that and building your character up to who you are, as you said, after you graduated, your character building, your personal branding started right then and there. Mm. See, and, and that takes discipline because imagine if you know what i uh, like for example atomic habits what's the one thing that book states you start with small habits yeah. every day it yeah. will result it will it will last it will give you greater results when it comes to 
15 years yeah mm-hmm. and it gives you products like luso mm-hmm. working with the vander kane edmonton oilers and stuff like that so take us through the process of like you know even for example like the water band you guys have luso that you guys partnered up with and i think you're one of the um, one of the partners one of yeah, the partners, partners correct yeah so how did that process come about? Because it's not easy just to, mm. hey, casually hanging out with having a <laughs> Vander Kane as someone you can bring on or work with in a brand. Yeah. Kid from Edmonton. Yeah. <laughs> That's not an easy thing to accomplish. Well, it's funny. The, the Vander Kane uh, relationship started over two years ago prior to when we launched Luso. So one of my roles is a brand ambassador for Maserati and Alfa Romeo, owned by the guys in Calgary from Ferrari of Alberta. But I've been with uh, with Maserati and Alfa Romeo for, oh, I think two and a half years now. Mm-hmm. And one of my roles with them is to just expose their brand, like get it get it well known. A lot of people didn't even know we had a Maserati dealership two and a half years ago. We're, a smaller, <laughs> we're a smaller shop just off 170th Street yep. next to, uh, uh, just off the Lexus, like close, close to Lexus and, oh, okay. uh, and yep. Porsche, I believe. But, uh, you know, it's a smaller dealership. It's very boutique. So I was brought on as their brand ambassador and it's been an amazing ride just to represent a brand like Maserati that I remember as a kid I would see the Trident logo driving on the street <laughs> kid from Clairview I'm like oh man one day one I day. drive that car <laughs> yeah. I could hear the exhaust I'm like this it probably has one of the best exhaust notes I've ever heard even as a kid um, and so to, to just know that I'm working with this brand is incredible but one of my roles was to uh, to bring their brand out in a very professional, engaging way, but with the right partners. Mm-hmm. And so uh, initially I had Zach Hyman and I working uh, with Alfa Romeo. He was driving an Alfa. Uh, he had, unfortunately had to leave the brand because he has kids and needs a big, bigger vehicle. So my next task was find a new oiler. Yeah. So I, and again, my network is, is one of the reasons why I am where I am today. Uh, I can call upon people. I, I have you know a really good circle around me. So a good friend of mine who's also one of our partners in Luso, his name is Chris Karen Palace. He is good friends with Evander Kane. Uh, he found him his first house. Uh, they're, they're working together on some things. So I reached out to Chris because I knew he knew Evander. And I said, hey, we're looking for an, our next ambassador for Maserati and Alpha. And at the time, uh, Evander had almost just landed in Edmonton. Yeah. And there were some things, you know, happening with his yeah. brand and, and, uh, and, and some question marks. But I said, you know what? I think he's going to be great for the city. He's, he's going to work on his brand. And I think he'd be great for, for Maserati and Alpha. So I reached out to Chris. We had a lunch. Uh, we went to Coliseum Pizza, I believe, just <laughs> off uh, next to the old uh, arena. <laughs> the guy ate like a machine. He's, 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 yeah. he's nuts. But he was, he was so well you know, received in that meeting. Just people around him were just like so happy to see him. I thought he'd be great for the brand, great for the city. So I brought him on and, uh, and he's been with the brand ever since. And he's done really, really great work for us. Uh, he's exposed the brand in, in a great way. Uh, and I think he's been great for the city as well. So Evander and I have been working together with the Maserati and Alpha brand for over two years. So we kind of do all of his content. We've done some really cool videos for him and the brand, which you can find on my Instagram account and the Maserati page and his page. Yep. And then uh, Luso was a really interesting idea from one of my close friends, Aleem Popatia, who is the partner of MLT Aiken's law firm. I've known him since I was in my teens. He uh, he grew up with me in like kind of Matt Berry area in Northside. Yeah. And, uh, and he had this idea to create a water brand uh, over five years ago. He was ready to almost launch in, in the COVID, area, COVID era, but then we had to put it on hold. And then we officially launched last summer. But our goal was to find a brand ambassador, of course, and to mm-hmm. help really elevate the brand yep. and expose it and catalyze it uh, you know, quicker than, than I could probably do or anyone else uh, could probably do. So because I was working with Evander uh, on Maserati, uh, Aleem had actually done some legal work for him. Uh, we approached him with the idea and and because it fit his brand, you know, it's non-alcoholic, it's a sexy brand. Uh, we felt that there's good potential there. He yeah. came on as our brand ambassador as well. So there's there's five people involved in the brand. Uh, I was lucky to be, uh, I, I was lucky to hear about the brand through Aleem about two and a half years ago. And then we really started uh, going full tilt with it uh, last summer. Yeah. And now we're in about 30, just under 30 restaurants in Edmonton. Oh. Um, and places like Cactus Club, uh, Sabor, Black Pearl, um, a lot of independent chains. Yeah. But also we're trying to go after the big boys like, like mm-hmm. Cactus Club. So we're in Cactus Jasper Ave right now and, and they're testing us out there right now. And now we're slowly, slowly getting outside the province and going kind of across Canada. 
Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, it's a crazy story. It's a, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it kind of goes, and then now it kind of ties into the, your mindset approach. Because mm-hmm. thing is, nothing is accomplished today or who you are without the mindset that you had yeah. at an early age. Because as you said, it starts from an, an early age and willingness to give up the things that people find that short temper, like, oh, this feels good. It's exciting. Let me go out. Let me go party. You can have that. But a lot of the people just focus on that aspect. Yeah. And what do you see a lot of the time these days when people do reach a certain mark of like when they're 30, 31, now they use an excuse for not putting that work at an earlier mm-hmm. age. And now they look bad and be like, no, oh, um, I'm battling through certain issues. This, that. Now, when you see on like regular basis, a lot of people use depression as a word to just throw around. Like I, I, you know, people that go through traumatic experiences, my heart goes out to them. Yeah. Those mm-hmm. people like, you know, seek the help they need. But nowadays, the word depression is thrown out like it's some sort of just terminology they can just throw around to seek petty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, to justify where they are in life, to kind of, hey, this happened to me, this happened to me, da da da. But in reality, nothing's happened to you. <laughs> you yeah. live in <laughs> your pains put you in a position to succeed, but you took it for granted. Mm. And now you look back at it, but like, I wish I didn't do that. For sure. You know, and then kind of speak on the mindset approach that you had from an early age that put you in a position to succeed in life that you, uh, you know, that you are in today. I think my favorite, favorite saying or quote, as cliche as it sounds is, don't be afraid to fail, be afraid not to try. Mm. And I've lived that mentality since I was 21. I remember I, graduated and I took the first job I could get a recruiter helped me yeah and I was selling chemicals for a company called Univar and Mm. I didn't want to do that but I took it because I was like you know what this is my my intro to the corporate world and then ever since that that job I tried to level up myself to the next role the next company and I would always try and always and I I'd fail a lot man I I got fired at least a few times in my 20s <laughs> because one I, I i couldn't relate to people that i'd be working with depending on the industry no. i was always usually the youngest guy in the room likely the most colored person in the room too <laughs> yeah working for you know oil and gas chemical companies transportation industry in oil and gas and so i was working in that industry for a while <laughs> but i was always willing to take the risk and you know i wanted to learn as much as i could like my resume <laughs> it's probably five, six pages long. <laughs> My brother's resume is one page long because he's worked for AIMCO yeah. for 11 years. Wow. So him and I are very different. Different, yeah. He, and, you know, I, I looked up to him for, and I still look up to him just because he's such a smart guy, very academic guy, and I'm the creative person. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny because in school, I was always the creative person. I didn't love being in school, but I, <laughs> I loved the projects. I loved being creative with my mind and with my hands. And he was very studious, very academic. But I, I told myself when I have the opportunity to get hired by a company or just put myself out there, I always will do it. I'll always try. I don't care. I don't care about failing. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's the maybe the problem with today's generation is they want instant gratification. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they want to they want to realize the reward immediately. Exactly. Man, you have to put in the work. Oh, yeah. and, and I had to put in the work for many, many years and I, I don't regret any of it. I don't regret getting fired. Mm. I don't regret learning from that experience. Uh, but I've, I really put myself out there. And that's the only reason I am where I am today. I think I was 27 when I I got fired by a company or I was about to and I just realized it wasn't going the right way I wanted to go. And I and I sat down with a good friend of mine, Mike Melanchuk, who's one of the top realtors in the city. He was managing a team of 25, 30 um, I said, hey, I want to get into the industry. I just yeah. I love architecture. I love design. I love homes. And he's like, you know what? You should go into mortgages. He's like, be my mortgage guy. Mm. Get your mortgage license and, and I'll help you. I'll introduce you to the industry. Mm. So I did. I, I quit my salary job, you know, I and I quit before they let me go. I was like, you know what? This is <laughs> I have to do it. I have to try yeah. something new. Yeah. Took a risk. And I got my mortgage license and I started working with him. And it became so much too quickly that I had to step away from his world because oh, wow. it was it was too much business. <laughs> and I was failing again because I wasn't ready for all the work. Mm-hmm. And I took a step back and I started working with other realtors and, and built up my company. At the time, it was called Mortgage Advantage Group. Yeah. And uh, built it up to a point where I went on KB Capital's radar. Mm-hmm. And KB Capital, incredible company. I was able to relaunch the residential division, uh, which was a huge 
honor for me just to be able to work with a group like that. And I was with them for about just under three years. And then recently this, this past summer I moved over to Legacy. But the whole time throughout that process, I was just trying. Yeah. You have to have that mentality of not being afraid to fail. And I think a lot of people are, you know, they're so, they, they get in this comfort zone mm-hmm. and they don't want change. They want change yeah. And they're not open to interviewing or meeting new people or networking. And I'm, I was never the most academic person, but I was always the most creative person. And I was always the most, I always had this ability to talk to anybody. Yeah. And so that was really what set me apart. It's just my communication skills. Mm-hmm. Um, and I use that to my advantage kind of go throughout my career. Yeah. And then I think that's kind of huge what you said, communication skill. Because if you're sitting in a room full of people that are, you know, influential, you're perceived by what comes out of your mouth. Yeah. Your character is you know, defined on what you say, how you carry yourself. And that goes a long way in regards to putting yourself in a position to succeed. Because right. people don't realize if you articulate yourself well and you put yourself people around that actually matter and not just around people that give you gratification for the, te- you know, temporarily, it will it will put you in the process of starting that upward slope. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's what people don't realize. Because like, at the end of the day, it's a character building process. Yeah. That's what mm-hmm. life is. Mm-hmm. It leads you to a point where like, yes, making money is part of it. But if you're not developing your character in the process, then you're not actually doing anything right. you know I, I, personally that's what i feel like you're just staying afloat for as long as you can for sure because hey i gotta pay my bills and this and that i gotta go i, I gotta go to the club i gotta go yeah. to, uh, turn up this that <clears throat> and then i think that's the one misconception having wealth and like what wealth actually means having the wine instead of attaining wealth because mm. i can give you money tomorrow and not know not know what to do with it mm. The mindset of actually having wealth is understanding mentally what that means. Yeah, for sure. You know, kind of walk us through like, what do you, how do you differentiate that? Like actually having like, you know, what wealth means to you and like what that mindset of approach of, how do you, like, what's your understanding of wealth is? Mm. Well, I mean, that's subjective to everyone's opinion. I think wealth is, it can be defined differently from everyone. Yeah. When I was younger, of course, wealth is money. You know, you want to have a, a big bank account. I remember when I was in, in university, I would joke with my friend on, we went to school in Montreal, we joke on, on St. Catherine Street, like, what's in your checking account right now? I, <laughs> I, I had 50 cents in my account. Yeah. I, was, I was young. Yeah. My mom was sending me allowance. But I always tell myself, okay, when I start working, I'm going to save. I'm going to live lean and, uh, and, and just try to gain as much money in my account as possible. And now it's like wealth is defined in, in so many different aspects to me. I'm, I'm very lucky to surround myself with just a great group of people, family, my girlfriend, Teresa, she's, you know, my, my safe place. She's very, uh, calming for me. Mm -hmm. Um, she allows me to dream. Mm -hmm. She allows me to do what I want to do in life. And we're, we're a great support, uh, system for, for both of us, but just having a good circle around you. So important. And, and man, it's it's wealth to me when you can say no to someone and not even worry about Nobody, it. Yeah. Like I, <laughs> yeah. I, I have no problem saying no to you. Yeah. You know, my time is incredibly valuable. And I tell this to my girlfriend. I tell this to my friends. If if I don't get value from you, it doesn't have to be money. It could be anything. Just just if I am not reciprocating or feel that value is reciprocated with me and we spend a conversation, we spend lunch together, we spend dinner together, whatever it might be. But if I don't feel like I'm getting value from you, you're not going to have my time. Yeah. And I, I, you know, in my 20s, maybe I was a little bit more uh, free with that. I was, I would say yes to a lot more different things. But at this point in my life, I'm still, I still feel I'm very young, but I'm not going to give you my time if there's no value transfer back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with saying no. Yeah. And that's key. Because what you said, people see that as arrogant. They're like, you think you're better than me, bigger than me. No. If I want to associate myself with you, mm. I will. But if there's no value added to what I'm putting forward, yeah, then we're not the same level. That means yeah. I want to disassociate myself with that because sure. that's not what I want to surround myself with. Mm. But people see that as arrogant. So that's when like even like in our community, yeah, we see like a lot of the hate and the personal <clears throat> on the business side. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Do you, do you feel like there's a lot of hatred towards you know, a lot of people can look at you like, oh, he carries himself like an arrogant person. He thinks oh, he's yeah. this hard shot. <laughs> yeah. You know, I feel like that mentality, someone can come up to you and be like, hey, you know, I want to have a conversation with you. Yeah. And be like, hey, you can have a conversation with me. 
you don't have to forego the cost of judging me. You don't even know me. You don't yeah. know my background, where I come from. You don't know one thing about me, but you have the audacity to say, I'm Arrogant, I'm this, I'm that. Yeah. Like, why does that worry you so some, you know? Yeah, I, a perfect example. My girlfriend will kill me for saying this. She, <laughs> she, so we met on Instagram and, and yeah. we connected. Um, she judged me because she saw this facade. She's like, oh, this guy <laughs> carries himself a certain way. He, I, you know, I used to DJ back in the day. Uh, okay, not you. Well, I, I, I DJed recently at, um, at a club called Double Dragon. My friend uh, Justin owns it, and it was for this amazing artist, yeah. uh, Marsh, who, uh, you know, I'm, I, I love my deep house, and I've been playing for since I was probably 19. But I got asked to play the show, so I did that. But, you know, she judged me from what she saw. Yeah. Mm. And she's like, maybe this guy isn't right for me. Maybe, you know, he's he's a little cocky and yeah. he carries himself a certain way. And how she uh, realized that that was false was I actually <laughs> I sent her a blooper reel of myself doing videos for KB Capital, um, basically messing up all my lines yeah. and like smiling <laughs> and making making a fool of myself. Yeah. yeah. And she realized this guy's legit. This guy's funny. <laughs> you know, he's not he's not who what he sees on instagram and like you know the highlight reels on instagram everyone sees a certain my my brand is that's your brand a certain type of way but i think it's important that yeah i i don't really care what people think of me i mean my friends my family know who i am yeah mm -hmm. um i think if there's an opportunity to get to know someone if someone reaches out on instagram or wants to connect for a quick phone call like i'm happy to do that stuff i think i i position it to myself in this way if i if i have the uh courage to reach out to someone like me if i was younger mm. and if someone reciprocated that conversation i, I would love that love as a that. young kid oh, you know? yeah. and sometimes that happens to me now and i'm like i think about that all the time i'm like i will do that all day long mm. i will have that conversation i'll be there for that person i'll try to pay it forward because i would have loved that uh as, as a younger kid as a younger you know professional growing up in, in this world so I, yeah, you can't really worry about what people think of you. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to present uh, a professional image. And, you know, every time we work with a client, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. I always try to teach them. Every person is a salesperson. You have mm -hmm. to understand how to sell. You have to know yep. how to talk. I don't care if you're a doctor or a lawyer, you're a salesperson. So, you know, you have to have that ability to present well online, but also just, you know, connect that human connection to your brand as well. Yeah. And, and I think that's the one thing is like a lot of people make quick judgments because of what you put or present yeah. yourself on social media. Social media is a great thing if you use it properly. Right. But the thing is like a lot of people, what they'll see is that like what you're saying with your girlfriend, right? Yeah. This person is, just, this is how he's presenting himself. He's <laughs> yeah. egotistic. He's yeah. that, this type of thing. Even for my, for myself, right? When I first saw you <laughs> on Instagram, it was for me, it's like whenever I see someone with such status mm. and such type of presence in social media for me it's not thinking of like who they are right now but how they got to that right to that right. point yeah so that's why i was curious and then that's when we started conversation stuff like that right? yeah so for me um this is a whole another um perspective that i wanted to talk about is how did you make yourself more presentable mm. in a sense of social media being able to present yourself in a professional matter that you have value that yeah sense. i think it was pretty simple i approached this when i when i started mortgages I had no experience whatsoever. I, I was really nobody in the industry, but I, I licensed myself with a group that had a good reputation already. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, anyone who's building a brand, it's very difficult to do that on your own. Mm -hmm. But if you collaborate with the right people and purposely find good people to work with, to transfer value with, uh, you can really elevate your brand pretty quickly. Yeah. So if you if you tag team with somebody or, or hop onto someone's bandwagon that's already successful or already has a good brand, good reputation, and you can do anything. Yeah. So that was my strategy in mortgages when I was licensed. I had no experience. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> but I licensed myself with a team that was ranked number one in Alberta. And when I would try to go after clients, I would have zero experience. I'd have a good brand behind my name as Shafraz, but I had zero experience in the mortgage world. I would say, well, my broker has X amount of years and he's working with me on every single file. Yeah. So I would build myself up with the team that I was on. And so it, that, that goes with anything. Like I've been able to build my brand with, it actually started my, my, my brand ambassador role with Car Started with Genesis. Mm -hmm. And then that's where I worked with Leon Dreisaitl. So I would always find ways to grow myself by collaborating with good people. Um, you know, that's, 
that's a rare thing to do. And it's not easy to do either. Yeah. But if you can transfer value and how I would transfer value with all these collaborations with, you know, my Instagram was was used to promote a lot. Like I was just a kind of a natural promoter. Uh, I very be very specific with what I I want to promote on my Instagram. But I would say to a realtor, for example, uh, as a mortgage broker, listen, I would love to do work with you. I'll come to your open house and shoot some stories yeah. and and promote you online. So there's transfer of value. Mm -hmm. I'm valuing exactly. you know his his time and his listings, and he'd value me as a mortgage broker. So it, you know it'd be no different than me working with dealerships like. My, my focus with them is to grow their brand, help mm -hmm. them sell cars, get them good partnerships like the Evander Kane and Zach mm -hmm. Hyman's and yep. Leon Drysaddle. Like I would do all those things. So anything that I have today, it's not without transfer of value. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then um, with, with being a brand ambassador for so many multiple um, organizations, um, do, you, do you have a type of standard that you hold like you you set for these organizations that you work with that they need to have these type of standards. Um, Cause at the end day, like we, what we don't talk about is that yes, you have your own brand, they have their own brand, but you also want to make sure that you guys are able to blend together in a sense where it, it doesn't conflict yours as well in a sense, yeah, indirectly. So how, do you have a type of standards when, when you do work with different brands? I think the biggest thing for me is if it doesn't synergize with who I am, yeah. I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. okay. And like yeah. for me, if I am already using those services on a regular basis, then that's what I'm going after. Right. Like mm. I'm a brand ambassador for Archetype and JW Marriott, yeah. you know, and I, I love that gym. I think it's one of the best gyms in the city, province, country. It's a super high class, great members, amazing location. I, I love fitness. And so like I always find ways to i, I kind of say like life hack like <laughs> figure out things that you love yep. mm -hmm. and then find ways to get that for yourself whether it's transfer value or maybe discounts or whatever it might be so i i try to life hack a lot of things that i do in life but it's again transfer and value so when you say like you know it's important to to understand what you want in life and you can do it if you really try like i i'm also one thing i'm really excited about is um my team and i are going to cabo in march and we're staying at the Viceroy, which is a, like a six star resort. It's one of the nicest ones. Out there. Yeah, yeah. Like Justin Bieber <laughs> stayed there. Recently. So we're staying there for for five nights, six days, and they're comping our entire stay. Wow. And I'm staying in a penthouse. <laughs> but I reached out to 20 resorts before I got to this point. Okay. So it's not for a lack of trying. And my focus for Curate Collective is to also do resort style marketing. Mm. And, you know, I'm, we're going there, we're staying, I'm, I'm taking Teresa, it's a vacation for us, but my, my team's also coming. I got them a room and we're going to be working a few hours a day, but the rest is vacation. But, you know, I'm really excited to be able to do resort style marketing, but it's also, I'm life hacking. It's like, I want to go on a vacation, but I'm accessing an incredible resort with transfer of value. Exactly. So we're shooting some incredible content for them, but I was also, no one sees the work that took to get to that point. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd be I'd be reaching out to 20 different resorts before one said yes. You know, I, my strategy was really unique where I'd go on a resort's website and half of them are in Mexico and it'd be a plus 44 number. <laughs> so I would I would add the plus 44 number in my phone. I would then go on WhatsApp to see if they're a WhatsApp uh, yeah. contact and I'd cold call them. <laughs> and they would say, "Hola," and I'm like, well, start talking to them right away. I just yeah, start. Yeah. I'd start pitching myself immediately as soon as I yeah. got them on the phone. And nine times out of ten, it wouldn't work. But one mm. time, it did. Yeah. And that was with the Viceroy, which is which is an incredible resort. So we're really excited to go there, build our portfolio in that in that space. But it, it's man, you have to put yourself out there. And so when you talk about you know partnerships and brand ambassador roles. I just, whatever I feel I would want, uh, you know, in, in my life, then I go after it. Hmm. And uh, and I'm not afraid to fail. I just put myself out there. Yeah. I think that's the important thing is like, you, you need to have confidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you you yourself, you're capable of doing it. And, and the thing too is like, we were touching, uh, you are talking to me before, is like about failure, right? Mm. Like a lot of people, when they, when they do face failure, they just give up. Yeah. They're like, that's it. That's yeah. the end of me. Yeah. Right. But what they don't understand is just an obstacle. You just got to learn from your failures and just move on and go into the next day. Yeah. Right? That's, that's true. That's the thing, though. It's like people don't want to forego the cost of the years working. 
after six months, people are willing to quit what they started. But that goes to show they're not passionate about anything. Yeah. Their purpose is what? Mm -hmm. The short term gain that they can get. Hey, I saw that person do it. I can do it too. But mm -hmm. that's not what it's about. You know, it's funny that um, you have a marketing agency. One of my friends, he reached out to me yesterday. Uh, he has his own marketing agency as well. So he, 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 he called me. He's like, man, he's like, help me get more clients. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm like, what clients do you have right now? He's like, man, he's like, I have this one client that um, I do so well with. He's like, me and him is such a good relationship. I'm like, okay, I'm like, do oh, you have any videos and everything? He's like, no, I'm like, how, how does anybody know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, if you're not putting yourself out there with his client that you say you have such a great relationship, nobody knows. Only you yeah. and him know. You and me are friends. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you got to be different from what's out there. Imagine I'm like, do a short clip with him. 30 seconds. It provides You provided him a value of doing him yeah. good on your side by, you know, doing whatever he needed to do. For sure. You know, and then I'm like, hey, ask him. 30 second clip or whatever. He put it out there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. guess what? That's how you retain more people that you want to attain. I'm like, yeah. without it, I'm like, you have no presence at all how are people supposed to know i'm like imagine if this word gets out your quality will speak for itself because at the end of the day quality attracts yes for sure. it's never quantity attracts no, it will no. only quality attracts for example as you said people brands reached out to you right because they saw the work you were doing yeah. so i think people had the misconception of you know i gotta get more people could get more people get more people i'm like no you have people yeah focus on that and mm. see how i can use that to my advantage mm. as you said the value exchange Mm -hmm. is not being exchanged yeah. is being lost and Very when awesome. you lose that you lose out on you know that growth stage when you, you're like struggling to go for sure you know sure. when people people like well i'm struggling to grow but that's because they're not looking at what they have mm -hmm. they're looking at what's out there right rather than understanding what they have is they have a you know basket full of fruits yeah but they're not digging in the old fruits they want to dig into other people's baskets for sure for you know sure. Yeah, you have to appreciate what you have while working towards what you want. Mm -hmm. I know I and I I struggled with that maybe in my early 20s. And I'm like, OK, I want all these nice things. I want more money in my account. But man, you have to be so appreciative with what you have while working towards what you want and, and acknowledge that a lot. Take the time to look around you. Be grateful. I mean, there's there's so yep. much shit going on in this so world. Much, yeah. And I think uh, it's very easy to look at someone else's life and say, I want that. Look at someone else's highlight reel, someone else's Instagram page and say, wow, I want that. But we're very lucky in many ways. Um, but as you said before, no one sees, man, the work that I put into this. Yeah. And I'm still working every single day. But I'm also very passionate about this business now. Being able to be a part of different company stories and, and watch them grow um, and be exclusive to them in their industry, it's so rewarding. Uh, it's something that I didn't think was possible. I've always, you know, in my in my early twenties, I'd apply to, you know, senior marketing manager roles, and I have zero experience. And of course, I wouldn't get the job, <laughs> but I would get maybe offers working for one company at a at a decent salary. And I said, I I can't be who I want to be working for one company. And now, mm -hmm. being a fractional advisor to a handful of companies, it's been a dream for sure. And I've I've really only started taking it seriously since last summer, uh, but my focus isn't quant uh, quantity, it's quality, right? It's just really honing my expertise and giving my all to a handful of great people. Uh, and you you do that, honestly, they'll take care of you as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right? It's not it's not about trying to get as many clients as possible. It's just working with a good core. Yeah. And then what do you feel like the, that pivotal moment in your career? Because as you said, I think you said when you started working for KB, that's when you kind of realized like, what your well you, you always knew what you were passionate about yeah but that, that that turning point in your life when do you feel like that was like through your journey honestly yeah working for working for a company like kb capital being recognized as a as a really you know I, I, as a professional and and giving giving the ability to myself to to build a division was was rewarding um it made me realize that people respect me and uh, I have a lot of value to give, uh, but also then working on Curate Collective in 2020 and, and being able to work with different clients and being a, a value add to their business and an asset to their business uh, was pivotal for me. Yeah. Um, you know, and then again, the summer of 2023 in August when I started taking it seriously and and also, you know, I evolved my role with with two clients uh where i became kind of a, an advisor to them which 
has been very rewarding. Um, and just to know that people seek me for, for advice, for guidance, uh, and I'm, you know, being able to evolve my role is not just a producer, content creator with my team. It's now a fractional advisor. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't come, that doesn't come in your twenties. It doesn't. You no, know, you got to put in the work. You have to work on your brand. You have to go through your struggles. You have to make mistakes and, and learn along the way. And, uh, you know, Jared Smith, who's an amazing man, very successful. He's an advisor to, to some great companies. But that didn't come overnight as well. You know, he's he's in his 40s and he worked his, his ass off. So for me to be able to do this at 35 is incredibly rewarding. Um, and I wouldn't trade it for the world right now. Yeah. And then, you know, and that's one of the thing is like understanding your self-worth. Because yeah. what brings you to this point is when you are going through that long journey of just, you know, the hardships, the failures, the risk taking, it builds you up to understand like, this is what I'm worth. You know your value, like you know your what your self worth is. But nowadays, what I feel like a lot of people have issue is understanding is being presentable. For example, like for yourself, man, I like, you know, I, in, in a way, someone like me can look up to you and the way you carry yourself like as an individual mm -hmm. and you know and a lot of people don't have that notion it's like i can gain something for you just because oh he's only 35 this that your age where you are in life i feel like it has genuinely nothing to do with what you can get out of someone mm -hmm. you know if i see someone like oh he's well dressed like i want to look like that like rather taking me like oh he's an arrogant kid that you think he got everything rather take motivation from it but you know but people don't understand that your self-worth comes from that inner that you want to do better by yourself yeah you mm -hmm. know and i feel like social media slowly eroding that mindset of what self-worth means because we're so easily swayed by phones man I, i'm telling you i see my nieces i see younger kids if they don't have their phones <laughs> while they're eating yeah. or while they're doing anything they they will go crazy they'll start crying throw a <laughs> yeah, fit and you know sure. what's so crazy it's programming people's mind yeah it really is because it shows the fact that if people can't get off like going to sleep two hours you're scrolling through it that's two over your two hours of your life that you could have done something for sure, else for sure to develop your personal traits but yeah. rather you chose to just scroll on on your phone for well, countless instant hours gratification right you're just yeah. like instantly um you know involved in your phone you get that instant gratification oh yeah i can scroll it's like it's it's a disease to be honest and I, i'm worried about when i have kids eventually <laughs> how am i going to limit their yeah. their time on their phones mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's tough i think uh yeah we're so easily manipulated with what we see online but i mean if i'm giving any advice to someone who's struggling with either finding themselves or their own self-worth it's just man you have to have a good circle around you hmm. like if you don't feel confident in yourself and you're not you know you, you're not able to pick up yourself and sometimes people aren't strong enough for that mm -hmm. you have to have a good core around you either with friends your family girlfriend boyfriend whoever it is uh just your circle is so so important and and i'm lucky to have that didn't come overnight though like you have to be very like i said you have to be willing to say no mm -hmm. you have to be willing to say no to that person who wants to go for a drink so yep. go to a club or whatever the case is and say yes to the right circle mm -hmm. but it's it's to me my my biggest asset is is my network and and just who i've decided to to surround myself with moving forward mm -hmm. yeah and i think that's huge too how you say learn how to say no to people because yeah. i feel like a lot of the time now these days when people are in a relationship i've seen them deteriorate rather than progressing together so what i mean by yeah. that is people don't have the talks of what um progressing individually and collectively means if you're not working on yourself while you're in a relationship, you're actually you're you're putting yourself in a position to actually have those like oh small fights. You you start to nag and nitpick a lot of the things. Yeah, and yeah. you know like being in a relationship, I feel like personally, if you're not growing with that person on all aspects of life, hey, you should do this because I see the creative niche. If you're not having those conversations with your partner, something is wrong. Yeah, because that's sure. what a partnership is about. And a lot of the time nowadays. It's a toxic relationship. That's why these you see divorce rates are so yeah. high. Like yeah. it's unreal. People don't want to be in a relationship because why? Because as you said, it's like social media gives you that that high. We're like, well, I'm chasing that. That person is so good looking. Da, da, da. But like you're sitting, you can't even 
sustain a conversation yeah. about how to grow as a person. Right. How far does that get you? Yeah, for sure. For and now sure. that now you have this bad image on what a relationship is, mm. and now you carry that forward and onto the next one. It's like a it's like a cycle yeah. that you got to break out of. So, yeah. and I think you're a perfect example of that understanding of surrounding yourself with the circle is just not something that everybody says. Mm -hmm. People that are successful out there, they don't just say it just for the hell of it. Be like. Oh, it's just get it. No, it's a proven fact. Yeah. Your mentality changes. But like, oh, he goes to sleep on time at 10. Yeah, he, there's no phone, this, that. He's getting up in the morning. He's working out. Yeah. Guess what? You implement that in your, uh, you know, your mm -hmm. routine. Right, right. And that's a change you wouldn't have if that circle is not there. No, no, for sure. No, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. Uh, now in my life, I, I'm surrounding myself with the best people. You know, I spend most of my time with my girlfriend and, you know, I call her my best friend. She, we were, we were at a, a house a couple of weeks ago. It was kind of a client meeting for me, but she came to support me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she told them that, that I'm her ride or die. And I've never actually had that said about me before. Mm -hmm. And it spoke volumes. Uh, we've only been together for two and a half years, but yeah, she's my ride or die. I'm lucky to have that now. Didn't come overnight though. No. Didn't, but man, I, <laughs> you know, we've all been through our shit, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I met her, you know, and, and she's, she's 30, I'm 35. But I met her at, at the best time for me. I met her when I was happy mm -hmm. individually. She met me when she was happy individually. Mm. You know, we had exited relationships, but at the time that we met, we were both incredibly happy individually. Mm -hmm. Collectively, then we we found each other and we just added value to each exactly. other. Exactly. But yeah, it's tough. I, I, there's a lot, there's a ton of relationships <laughs> up there that that aren't happy individually, and they think that oh, maybe I can partner up with somebody and I'll be happy then. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always happen that way. But, I think I think it's important to be happy yeah. on your own. First. But the thing is, when you when you do do that, you go into when you're individually like as a person are not at a point where like you're attaining happiness. It's a it's, it's a journey of itself by by yourself. Yeah. When you go into a, a relationship, you're almost sucking the joy out of that person that has good in them. For sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that person pre almost perceives it. I'm like. It sucks the life out of them. Yeah, mm. it turns that person into something that they're not. Their motivation goes down. Their overall mentality goes down. So it's just like understanding yourself. If you are in a relationship, whether it's a woman or a man, learn how to leave. Mm. Mm. No matter what it is, what position you are, because if you don't leave at a point where like this is not serving me in a positive manner, that's impacting my life to do better by myself, leave out of the situation. You might love that person. It happens but right. guess what it's not good for you though no. just because you love that person you have feelings mm -hmm. for them that doesn't mean you're, you're getting to a point where like after two two years like damn like yeah. you're still going through the fights you're right. still having that same yeah. you know that um that cycle so i think people's gonna understand that you know so i think i think adding on to yours is like uh is a big thing is like before even getting to that relationship, you make sure that you happy yourself. Yeah. Right. You invested the time, like all the stuff that we talked about is investing time in you within yourself, putting in time that you're making changes um, to get to where you want to be. Yeah. Before getting to a relationship, if you find someone along the way that has an understanding of like what you're trying to do and stuff, that's, you know, that's an exception. But both of you are actually working towards your uh, working on yourself. Right. Right. And, you know, when you're together and you're happy as well, because yeah. a lot of the times like nowadays relationships are just seeking happiness amongst each other for sure for sure so, yeah i yeah. think it's important and not to think about the big picture when you're thinking about change it's just small changes as an individual exactly. yourself like making yeah. those small you know changes that, that can be significant in the long run mm -hmm. you yeah. know i have i have some I call them healthy hobbies or healthy habits and yep. for me it's the gym every single day mm. i don't care if it's 20 minutes I need that like release of endorphins and I yeah. I hit the gym in my building before this because I didn't have time for the actual gym, but I still went. Still it was went, 20 no. minutes. Yeah. And I feel better because of it. And and for me, yeah, it's 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 having those little healthy hobbies that that make you feel better as a person. I don't care what it is, but just do it for yourself because that'll make you a better person for your partner. Yeah. yeah. Better brother, better sister, better son, daughter, whatever it is. Just try, try to be the best version of yourself. And do what makes you happy so that you can be the best version for people around you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then one thing, you know, me and Mok, like we always talk about this, like, I feel like the way you present yourself, like um, yeah. dressing yourself, I feel like it's, it's kind of getting 
a lost art because at the end of the day presenting yourself like i was consider you someone who's who's uh presentable that dress as well so you know what are some of the tips that you say where do you shop and whatnot because these days people want that flashy stuff they yeah. want that stuff that's baggy flashy yeah. oh, i got this <laughs> oh they're not going to be in the corporate world or they're not going to be respected <laughs> by by the majority of people you know like it depends on your industry like listen yeah. if you're if you're in music dress how the hell yeah, you that's want true. Yeah, yeah. If you dress for your environment right yeah. dress for the people that you want to attract I think that's my my one piece of advice. And listen, man, I I listen. I came from nothing. I had no money in my account. Uh, to this day, like I yes, I might have more money in my account. And I might have more, might have more savings. I'm not spending five hundred dollars on a t shirt. Yeah, I'm going crazy. to Zara. That is man. Crazy. I'm going to yeah. Zara. <laughs> that that shit fits me well. I'm a perfect yeah. thirty eight suit. I yeah. know what fits me. Their t shirts fit me well. Like I I don't need to reinvent the wheel just because I. I have more savings now. I think that uh, I'll always be the same person. It's not about the brand. Yeah, and I always thought it's about how it fits. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care if you're wearing a Xenia suit or a Zara suit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get the right fit and you'll look like money. You'll look like a millionaire, yep. right? So mm -hmm. it's about the fit. If I can give any piece of advice, just make sure it fits well. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's it. I don't care what brand it is. And, and if that's my one piece of advice, is just, is just find your fit. And that's yep. what a lot of people like have the misconception. Like brand means no. everything. Brand holds no value to no. the value that you have mm -hmm. yourself. As someone might look at you, but like you're sitting in a meeting and you're just wearing this shirt that just says a sprinkle, I don't yeah. know, a boss or something. <laughs> yeah. But like, what are you doing? Exactly. It's exactly. like, as you said, you got to know your environment and understand that, you know, how you present your spell speaks volume yeah. and you know and that speaks volume to your character if you don't know how to present yourself then you know you're as you said you're your own personal brand yeah you're a walking brand right. and the way you carry yourself and where you present yourself the way you articulate yourself all that put together is what leads to success and if you're not working on those small things then it won't it won't give you that um you know that growth you're looking for yeah so mm. people i think it, looking at you i would say like that's something that you have honed in on understanding that yeah. and how that helps me grow as a person, yeah. you know, and, and and it gives a different understanding to brands. But like, this is who I want to align myself mm. with. Mm. For you sure. Know? I think I, I live by this, this mentality, even when I was playing hockey for eight years plus, I said, look good, feel good, play good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and I was a goalie for, for many, many, many years. <laughs> and I always had the nicest looking pads. <laughs> I'd have like these black and orange RBK pads and I looked great but it made me feel good and i yeah. played well yeah. and that's just my mentality now like i will always try to look as good as i can it'll make me feel good mm -hmm. and i'll play well in the industry but you know depends on yeah where you're what your industry what you're, you're in yeah. what what environment you want to be in i would say if you want to be in the corporate world study the corporate watch suits yep. right go watch something that that attracts you, that that makes you feel good about yourself, then then dress for that environment. Mm -hmm. You have to dress for success. As cliche as it is, man, <laughs> you do. dress for success, but feel good about yourself and match your environment. Mm -hmm. Like in sales, in any conversation I've ever had, in any interview I've ever, I've ever had, I've always dressed for that environment, but I've matched the person. Mm -hmm. So I, I do my research and I always match the people that that uh, I hope to get things from. Yeah, like even one of my, my friend, he's, um he has his own suit company oh, in, nice. in, uh, in Vancouver nice. and uh, he's a good buddy of mine. And like, he's similar, like how yours is he, he his, he has a company, he has a brand and, and of that sort of type of reputation. And I was talking to him when I was in Vancouver and um, he was telling me when he first started, he worked in the corporate world as uh, corporate world as well. And when he approached it, he didn't have much financials in mm. a sense, but like he told me, he's like, he, there was one networking event where he went to where this guy he was he spent ridiculous amount of money on a suit it was like five thousand six thousand dollars he only had money for you know for zara um he got a tailor and everything 500 bucks and he said that he actually got a lot more compliments compared to that guy <laughs> right just because how it fits him right just because how he takes care of himself he goes to the gym yeah make sure his nutrition is on point yeah um his presentation his posture everything yeah, exactly right yeah so it's 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 just how you present yourself in society yeah. and in public mm -hmm. in itself and you don't need to break the bank for no it, right? so <laughs> definitely not man you know, kid yeah. from clairview don't, knows how not to break the bank when it comes to clothes i think it's all about fit and it's just feeling good in what you have and honestly I, all the power to the people that can wear a five thousand dollar suit good for you yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm not i'm not coming down on those people yeah. at all but it's for the people that just want to look good and feel good man you just watch your environment study your environment mm -hmm. and match it you'll be successful yeah yeah another another sorry, I was no, no, good. Uh, but what i was going to say was like another um on top of touching on self-care 
um, is about grooming as yeah. well. <laughs> so I originally had a, a men's grooming com uh, company, and then I was also an athlete trainer. Oh, nice. But that was after you know after some time in university. Yeah. yeah. Right. So and it, it was a complete flip for me when again going into public, talking to people, professional people. It makes a huge effect. So what I wanted to see is like if you can give any advice for the younger generation and be specific <laughs> in regards to like, you know, like type of grooming products as yeah. in like, um, you know, cleansers and all that sort, right? Oh, man. I mean, I wish I was taught this at a young <laughs> age. Uh, straight up, I had acne. I had really oily skin. I still do. Yeah. But, my, you know, I wasn't taught what to do I, I remember my brother okay funny story so brown men are obviously hairy you know? yeah yeah, yeah. I, I grew myself and uh when you when i was younger i'm sure you guys have heard of nair yeah have you heard of yeah, nair? Yeah. Yeah, yeah i remember my brother and i would, would would try to use nair to like take care of some body hair and it would, did not go well it burned some places yeah you know um but we did that in our early age and i i didn't know how to groom i i wasn't taught many things and as i got older i i did more research and i figured out what, what works for me and and recently i started doing like laser hair removal mm -hmm. yeah which is money i mean if you want to groom yourself do that i mean you're never gonna fully get the hair removed because we're brown <laughs> men we we're, you know we're hairy guys yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh but laser hair removal i highly recommend like if you want to take care of that and and i work with uh one of my clients is actually zia cosmetic clinic in mm. Calgary Trail, Stony Plain, they have a location in Sherwood Park. So we're doing all their media, but they also do laser hair. And I'm doing laser hair uh, appointment on Friday this coming up Friday. Uh, so I'm excited for that. But when it comes to grooming, like I've used, I use electric shavers a lot. Like the Phillips one blade is really, really good. Mm. Uh, I use that for my beard. My girlfriend loves my beard now. She's like, keep your beard. So I used to, I used to shave a lot. I have a really like baby face and she's like, keep your beard. I'm like, yeah. so now I'm keeping the beard for her. Yeah. Um, but Philips one blade is really good. I use a lot of electric shavers and then for, for face products, uh, again, I don't break the bank at all. I, I, I don't spend a ton of money on this stuff. I used uh, a brand called Jack Black, mm. which is at shoppers. It's like this blue, uh, blue label mm -hmm. men's bottle, amazing stuff, oil free moisturizer. Cause I'm super oily. <laughs> and then I, I wash my face every night and every morning with this, like, volcanic clay oil <laughs> shit i mean i don't know if it's, it's definitely not from a volcano but uh, it yeah, works yeah. for me you know yeah. and it's like a face mask as well so <laughs> i have super oily skin and it's important for me to have this this routine uh i'm a creature of habit though like i come to my place it's it's black it's white it's marble it's just like my coaster literally is on the table yeah. to a 90 degree angle and if i see it <laughs> curve i will fix that if my blanket is not folded correctly uh, i'll fix that so yeah, yeah. i'm a creature of habit everything has to be a certain type of way i'm not ocd by any means but yeah. I'm, I'm very particular yeah, yeah, very yeah, clean yeah, yeah. that yeah, way yeah, yeah. um so i am a creature of habit i do my things in the evening and night uh, evening and morning i have my 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 face products that i use and now i'm also doing laser hair removal which I think is is money. I still groom, uh, mm -hmm. you know, which I think is important, and because you're never gonna fully have the hair gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, it depends on what you want, man. Like some some people want to keep it all, some people want to take it off. I mean, I've had a lot of people that don't, have done laser hair removal and they swear by it. So, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, if you're looking to groom that way, I recommend it. And and Jack Black's a great product for your face. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah. And then one thing we want to kind of touch upon is like um, we're always we're from <coughs> immigrant backgrounds, yeah. you know, and. Um, how do you think that journey kind of made you who you are today? The outlook you had on life. Because at the end of the day, our parents came here for a better life for us. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people what don't realize is at the end of the day, that responsibility is not on our parents to succeed in life. It's on us. Yes, it, obviously they instill the values and the morals in us. But a lot of the times I have felt victim to this because, you know, it's that it's that poor man's mentality that, oh, my parents didn't teach me this. I didn't do. But at the end of the day, it's not on them. They did everything they could to put you in this position mm -hmm. to succeed. And now it's on me to take that opportunity. OK, make something of it because mm -hmm. I, I got everything given to me. I, don't, yeah. I never had any complaints minus, you know the petty stuff that yeah. you know we make up in our head but in reality you know we don't understand the gift that we have of his life and mm -hmm. what you what you said to before people will kill to be in the position in north america I, I think it's a blessing in a disguise like living here 
um growing up here obviously there's downfalls to like certain other aspect of life but that's given anyway but if you look at the understanding of what the world is and actually go and travel understand how grateful we are here mm. i think people would change their mentality completely if they just step outside of their comfort zone and understand go travel somewhere where it's not a non-developed country reality will hit you fast yeah, mm. okay. and you know so take us in that journey that you that molded you who you are today, given that, you know, we are from an immigrant background and how that changed your perspective of what you want to accomplish in life, you know? Yeah, I think uh, being an immigrant or my, my family was, you know, immigrant family. Uh, I grew up in Clairview. I still remember playing road hockey in Clairview with predominantly, you know, white people. And they would yell like, Packy at me, mm -hmm. yeah, and I'm like, I'm not even Pakistani, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but they obviously don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I dealt with racism, and now I'm sure all of us have. Yep. You know, growing up in a predominantly white community, mm -hmm. uh, especially in Clearview, man. Yeah, <laughs> but it just makes you stronger. I, I, I never took that to heart long term. It just made me stronger. I remember I, I'd be forced to play uh, in net. Uh, and I was, man, I was 80 pounds or 70 pounds. <laughs> Half the time there'd be rocks being shot at me, not balls, because I would play on street, like Clairview street hockey. Yeah. But it made me stronger just overall. And then watching my, my, my family come from Africa, you know, yes, they are immigrant immigrants, but I was very lucky in the sense that uh, my mom, you know, took care of my brother and I and put us through university you know took care of our co we had no student debt so we were set up for success in that way we you know we didn't come from family money at all but she set us up for success in the sense that she's going to take care of us for our education mm -hmm. and then the rest is up to us yeah exactly and, and we we were very lucky in that sense um and you know from the moment i graduated you know it was just me trying to figure out my way in the world and and make those mistakes and learn those lessons and say yes to a lot of shit. My mentality was always a yes man. But it was I, I was lucky that uh, my family just was able to provide me with that that springboard in the sense that I didn't have those those student loans or those those the debt that most kids might have coming yep. to university. Um, so I've you know as much as they were an immigrant family, they worked their ass off to get mm -hmm. me to where I am today and to position me for for success. So I'm very lucky in that sense. Uh, and uh, truthfully, I worry about the generation after me when I have kids, like I, I will obviously give my children everything. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, you know, because I'm in a position that I can do that now, but I worry about how they'll navigate through life because they don't get to experience what I saw. You know, my mom worked yep. two jobs and, and all these things to get where we are today. Uh, they're not going to see their parents do that. Nope. Mm -hmm. But so it's 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 going to be a challenge, I think, for for us as like second generation immigrants who who now are in Canada who do have the means to take care of their kids and and maybe give them a, a bit of a different life. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a challenge for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you that? <laughs> but no, I, yeah. you know, one thing I do want to point out to that is I feel like we're getting away from. Um, who made us who we are today. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is you, we are byproducts of our parents, as you said, the values and the morals instilled in us. And a lot of the times, you know, one thing I do see is the resentment towards parents. Mm -hmm. I, I never got mm -hmm. this. I, I never understood that, you know, it makes no sense for people to hold grudges or you didn't provide me this or i was the one kid that got made fun of because oh because i didn't have this everybody else did mm -hmm. you know and which is perfectly okay in that moment it's okay to feel like that but understanding as you said those struggles those hardships they didn't have to do it no mm -hmm. no they didn't have to do why would they they yeah. could they could mm -hmm. care less but no they did it because you know why they saw a brighter future from what they went through back home to bring you here to give you a better life yeah you mm -hmm. think sure. that's easy to do Imagine if I, I I told myself I gotta restart my life in a whole different country, yeah. not knowing Can't whether happen. I'm gonna succeed. Yeah, and we don't put ourselves in that shoes often and think for ourselves. Like I'm a critical thinker myself. What I have done wrong, I always tell my employees. I'm like, listen, you're not my employees. I tell them, period. I'm like, you and me, we are equivalent. I I do everything based off your guys' feedback and vice versa. Yeah. 
I, I don't grow as a person and I don't grow as a leader if I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm like, nothing you say is going to hurt me. Be like, oh, wow, that hurt my feelings. No, yeah. I'm doing that wrong. I got to fix myself. Right. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean I'm, I'm, a, I'm not, a, you know, we work towards becoming perfect in all facets of life. But the only way that works is if you really sit there with your own thoughts and understand how grateful you have for the things you have yeah. mm -hmm. until you don't have those internal thoughts with you, sit down, be grounded. Yeah. And yeah. really understand where you are in life why are you there what am i doing wrong hold be accountable for your own actions right we can always it's easy to point fingers right but accountability takes a great um understanding of diminishing your ego mm -hmm. put your ego aside and understand that accountability starts character building and that's a, for me personally i think that's the first layer that's begins that journey of right. character building accountability right. Right. when you have that you really understand Damn, I'm really not who I thought I was, which mm -hmm. is okay. Yeah, for sure. You understood sure. that. Now you grow from there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, completely agree, man. So well said. I think that's just one of the people don't understand. But and from one of the things that I feel like that helped you was understanding. You said um, you had a mentor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In our community, we don't understand the perspective. Uh, we don't not perspective. We don't understand how important having a mentor can prolong a process from, you know, point A to B. You know. It, yeah, you can work your way through it, but understanding, reaching out and understanding a mentor can help you immensely. It can provide value that you could never even thought of. And it can, you know, you can reach your potential quicker, you know. So speak on the people like how do we even reach out in our community? Because we feel like, no, man, I can't reach out to no, I'm not reaching out to a guy. Like, well, he go teach me. We have yeah. this weird sentiment in our community. We do. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, so how do you go about that? Uh, you just have to be vulnerable, right? You have to be willing to take criticism and that you have to be willing to be vulnerable in your in, in your situations. I think it's, you know, when I when I get interviewed, I think that one of the questions is, are you are you bondable? Like, are you willing for change? Are you willing to learn and mm -hmm. adapt and be criticized? And so many people are so sensitive <laughs> that they don't want to be criticized. They yeah. don't want that feedback and they don't want to be vulnerable um, and putting themselves out there to a point where they can be criticized and they can be taught. And I think that for me, I wanted to be a sponge. I wanted to learn as much as I possibly could. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, and I never wanted to be the smartest person in the room. Yeah. You know, I wanted to learn from so many different people and I might not take everything that they learned me, but I wanted to take a piece of something from someone and then build up myself and who mm -hmm. I wanted to be. So I think it's, if you are willing to be vulnerable and, yeah. and put yourself out there, you can really uh, attract anyone. And for me, you know, being surrounded by initially in my mortgage career, Mike Melanchuk, and then now having Jared Smith, uh, you know, working me through certain things and even my brother and my, my family, just picking up pieces from certain people uh, and, and willing to adapt and willing to be criticized is step one. It is. You know, uh, like <laughs> people are just so afraid and they're, they're, they're too sensitive or they're just they don't want to put themselves on this pedestal and, and, and be criticized. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's 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 job number one is just to look at yourself and say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm willing for change. I'm willing to be I'm mm -hmm. willing to learn from that person. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? You, if you find the right people, people want to teach. People exactly. want to give back. They want to pay it forward because at one point in their lives, they were in your position. Mm -hmm. And and I get that sometimes too on, on Instagram. People reach out to me and a lot of people either ask for for a coffee or for dinner. And I and I won't do that, <laughs> but I'll go I'll go on a phone call with them and mm -hmm. I'll spend you know some time with them because again, time is time is valuable and you do yeah. want to you know be mindful of that. But uh, I think it's important to give back when you can and, and find the right people that are there for you. Not everyone's going to want to mentor you, mm -hmm. but there are people out there that will be willing to to give you their advice and, and just teach you what they went through in their life and, uh, and essentially pay it forward. Yeah, it's right time, right place, man. Yeah, like, exactly. As you said, you said your time right now is I want to grow my business. Right. And if someone's like, oh, you're not being arrogant to the fact that you don't want to be, you know, mention them this, that you just don't have time. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, how can I make time for you when I'm building my own brand? I'm growing yeah. as a person that has, you know, nothing to do with you. It's just personally, I'm not at that level where I can sit back and be like, yeah, I'm, that's what I want to do now. For sure. You for know, sure, yeah. so I think it's just right time, a right time, right place. You'll find that person that's willing to help you through that process. So yeah. just being patient with that process, not exactly. trying to rush it because it doesn't, it doesn't do you any harm. You just no. become more impatient yourself. Yeah. Like, man, no one wants to help me yeah <laughs> you throw your pity I, party <laughs> i know i know people are a little hard on themselves um but they also react 
after trying once you know what i mean like mm, yeah, a lot do, of people yeah, yeah. say they'll try once they'll do, it's like a one strike policy for <laughs> yeah them. yeah <laughs> uh, i have a lot of friends out there who are trying to do certain things and they'll reach out to me like oh man he didn't respond or he didn't uh he didn't want to work with me i'm like how many people did you reach out to oh just one <laughs> <laughs> man, I, you have to put yourself out there yeah, yeah you, you do it. you know yeah, like yeah. try keep trying until you until you succeed yeah. like i said i reached out to 20 different resorts in mexico that's mm. crazy man. and one said yes a couple maybe said maybe or maybe maybe in the, you know fall in, in the later in 2024 mm. and i and i promised myself i was like i know this is possible yeah i know i can do it i told my i told myself this earlier <laughs> earlier last year I said i know i can fucking do this mm. and i didn't give up until i did yeah yeah and now i, I landed a deal with vice Fry, which is that's crazy unreal like i can't yeah. wait to show you guys the content it's gonna be nuts yeah uh and if you go to their instagram account they have unreal content already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how I sold them, but I sold them. <laughs> and it's just because I tried, right? I, I don't have a one strike policy. Mm-hmm. I have 50 strikes. I don't give a shit. Yeah. So I keep to. trying until I succeed. Yeah. yeah. And then with that, just, you know, just having that entrepreneurial, you know, mindset, you know, for those who are, who are looking to pursue that route or even just in trying to invest in, like, if they're trying to invest in real estate or trying to expand their portfolio um, or if they're trying to open up a new business, like, what tips would you, um, what tips would you give to them to be to, in order to be prepared for it? Uh, I think I, I'll date back to what I was saying earlier is, is find someone who's already succeeded in that role and mm, find okay. someone who yeah. you can mirror. Yeah. I think there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. Mm-hmm. What, what I'm doing now has been done before. <laughs> I'm just adding a different flair to it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I'm just adding my flair to it. But it's, done, it's been done before. So if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to be successful, find someone who's already done it. Mm-hmm. And, and you, you don't necessarily have to reach out to them. If let's say they don't reach out back to you and you really want to work with them. Like I've, I've mirrored some people in Monaco. This one guy, his name's Tom Claren. Mm-hmm. He is a stud. He is uh, an agency owner. He works with top, top brands like yacht brands and luxury cars and luxury resorts. And I don't know who the hell he is, but I'm mirroring him Mm. from from a distance. So if you want to be an entrepreneur, study that industry, find someone who you can mirror and just just match it. But add your flair to it. Become an individual. And, you know, there's so many different entrepreneurs out there. There's so many different industries out there. But how you separate yourself is just being who you are. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Don't try to be someone you're not. Mm-hmm. You can take someone's influence and be inspired and be motivated by somebody, but add your own personal flair. And that's what I'm doing. I think it's just, you know, when I'm having the ability to talk to clients, I'm speaking from the heart. I'm speaking from passion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's what I truly love to do. But this has been done before. So, exactly. So it, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. And then... um Another thing too is like, um, with, with even just trying to invest, right? Like for, from my own perspective and my mindset is that, um, I have a really tough time trying to just enjoy life. <laughs> well, just no, not that good, but like <laughs> I'm pursuing my passion and what I'm trying to do, yeah, but at the same time, I'm trying to balance where I'm trying to like, enjoy not, life miserable. As well. <laughs> not miserable, not depressed, like, <laughs> but, but my thing is like, you know what? A lot of people just invent, you know, spend money, um, just trying to escape life. Right, they're they're buying stuff that they don't need to. They they don't have the money for it, um, and they're not reallocating their income, their their resources to what is necessary, what is what is potential. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and for me, it's like you know what, I'm gonna live below my means, my means, whatever I'm making. I gotta make sure my expenses are low enough, and yeah. that the difference between the two is my opportunity. Right, right. I'll use that towards my business to open up my agency, work with clients, travel to meet clients, so on and so forth. Right, or you know, invest in health and all that sort. Um, do you think that is true or like how much flexibility do you think there is in between that? I mean, I've, I've lived lean for most of my life and I still am. Yeah. Um, again, I've life hacked certain <laughs> things, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I've, I figured out ways to, to get access to certain things by providing value, but I have, I have lived lean and I think that you can definitely save money by living lean and living a, a lean lifestyle. But it's difficult to, to maybe save and to have that opportunity when doing one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it it takes time. It takes it time really to get there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that there is a lot of people out there that dedicate themselves to one career and you have to put in a lot of years to get to where you want to be. But 
I strongly believe that we are built to do multiple things. Mm -hmm. We are built to be diverse and we're built to do, uh, you know, multiple streams of income is definitely possible. So it's like, you know what? I think it's important, like we said before, is is appreciate what you have while working towards what you want. Mm -hmm. But you can work towards what you want as a side hustle. Mm -hmm. And you can have side hustles to get you to that certain point in life. I mean, I, 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 I think I have five or six jobs. But, and I don't recommend it for everybody, but I also have figured out a way to provide a fraction of myself to these, these different roles yeah. and, and, uh, and find value and transfer in value. Um, and I built a model that works for me. Uh, and you know what? I've been, I'm the least stressed I've ever been in my life now. Mm. And I'm doing the most. And yeah. that's, that's really unique that's really, because I, I found people that I can work with that trust me that I can give value to, I can give a portion of myself to them. And, and there's a transfer of value, but you know, I, I'm the least stressed I've ever been. And I tell this to my girlfriend, she's like, I don't know. I think we were, we were hanging out at my place on Saturday, watching the game, having a couple of drinks. And, uh, and she said something to me that, you know, kind of resonated. She's like, you're so motivated. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and she kind of appreciates that and, and, and recognizes that. And, and I, and I am, and I feel like, I'm at a point in my life where I want to say yes to as many things that make me happy. Yeah. And if it doesn't stick, it doesn't stick. Sure. But I want to say yes to those things and, and start dabbling the things that, you know, now I have the ability and I think I have the brand that I can, I can hop into different industries and give value to certain people um, and still, you know, make some money doing that uh, on the side. But I, I think it's important, you know, to, to have multiple streams of income yeah. and start small, start mm -hmm. small, right? It doesn't have to be, uh, you don't have to give a lot, a large portion of yourself to somebody. It just starts small. Yeah. Okay. And I think it's important because, you know, I'm in that transition now because myself, like, you know, my my first was I finished my accounting background. I was just I was uh, doing my CPM. So I'm like, <laughs> I was looking out the window. I'm like, do I really want to do this? I am I really didn't want to. I'm doing yeah. it because parents put me through yeah. it. And I'm going to do it. Dropped out. I'm like, no, no chance. Right. Right. <laughs> so then I told my dad, I'm like, listen, I know what I'm capable of. Trust me. Yeah. You know, and thanks to him, he helped me p get loans. And my first ever venture was I always wanted to operate a business. So he helped me get my first business. I was in half six million. Like I was close to like six to seven hundred K in debt because yeah. I had two stores at the time. So, I'm, you know what? I'm, I, I can do this. I was working 24 yeah. 7, 24 7, 24 7. But, you know, as you said, people don't realize I'm 29 now. Mm. And now I'm, I'm finally able to. I'm less stressed now, but but I have more money moving around. I have more uh, equations and different segments are moving around, mm -hmm. but I feel more happy now. Reason why? Because now I see what I work towards and, and it's coming to fruition little by little, yeah. you know? And it was so funny because I really want to get into real estate on the commercial side. So one of my good friends, uh, Aman, um, he had a, he set me up with a meeting, um, with a self storage company down in a salon in Ohio, I had no business being that big. <laughs> I had no, but thing is, I want to I want to associate myself with that because I I yeah. built myself up to where I have built my equity to have these conversations with people. Right. But I might not know to ask the right questions and whatnot in during this time period of frame. But guess what? I will never know what those questions to be asked if I don't put myself in that position. For sure. So I was sitting with this. Um, it, so he was a business strategist. And he's just talking about how they move liquid of close to 100 uh, million um, just in assets all over the world. And I'm saying, <laughs> what am I doing here? Yeah, right? yeah. But then he really sits down. He broke it down for me. And I and I took so much value from that. And I'm like, you know what? I might not have the right questions to ask you now, but I gained so much knowledge from this. Obviously, I didn't say this to the person, but, you know, <laughs> I understood what he was pitching to me. And, yeah. I, and it just made me understand that i'm capable of this for there's sure, a reason yeah. why i have i'm in this meeting now nobody randomly gets to this position if you don't put that work towards right. it so i'm sitting there i'm like internally i'm going through this process while i'm having this conversation with myself while he's uh going through his presentation right mm -hmm. and then uh after the call he's like he's, he's talking to you he's like well um he's like if this deal doesn't work out that is fine he's like there's many more to come he's like don't think this is you have to take this deal. You don't ever feel constrained to lose on an opportunity if it's not the right time for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, that is huge. 
understanding that i'm like okay you know what i don't have to be like a panic mode i have to impress him yeah you know because we all have that because now you're in a position where you want it to be but you feel like well i'm not ready right now because uh circumstances or this or that but you know and i do feel like um i resonate with you in a sense where i feel like it's completely possible to have different re um, revenue streams that are coming in on an annual basis uh, mm -hmm. i don't see their reason why not to unless you're comfortable mm -hmm. which is a scary place to be in once you become comfortable with your lifestyle you you will regress yeah you'll yeah. be you'll you be have, stagnant you have to want it period you have to want to challenge yourself uh you have to want to be uncomfortable yeah and and you have to be willing to put in the time exactly um like i said before i think uh, the generation before us might want instant gratification but there's so much work that goes into what we do and and you have to be willing to yeah make yourself uncomfortable and have change in your life exactly um it doesn't come overnight but once it happens man is it rewarding it is you right. know it's rewarding you're 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 proud of yourself and and you can look yourself in the mirror and say you know i built this mm -hmm. but i i put in the work to get here exactly yeah it didn't come overnight yeah yeah and then with 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 all the stuff that you're doing with the um, you know the, the the brands that you're working with the the content that you're producing and all that sort so what what do you besides of course the financial stuff of you know investing and all that sort like what do you hope to leave back you know what what are you hoping to give to the younger generation in regards to how you're moving and stuff? yeah just like an impact what do you want your impact to be remembered yeah. of like you know like this is who i am this yeah. is what i want to leave behind yeah, I think even if something is as as awesome as what we're doing today is you guys reached out and you wanted me to share my story. I think I'm obviously putting out a, a positive brand and a positive image, and yeah. and all I can hope is that someone who wants to be in my position, ten years you know younger than me, is just is being inspired by that mm -hmm. and seeing that it's possible. Um, I just want to leave a good reputation behind. I think I want to leave. The fact that Shafraz is is well known, he's well respected, and he's an asset to to multiple people. But to be a part of everyone's story behind Career Collective and working with a, a handful of great companies is is rewarding. It's yeah. rewarding, uh, and it's something that I've I've been striving to be a part of for so long. It's why I got into mortgages was because I could be a part of someone's story, help mm -hmm. them move into a home, and. and uh, you know, now I, I know what my why is. Mm -hmm. and yeah. That didn't come overnight either, right? That's mm -hmm. just understanding what your why is is so important. But leaving just a really good reputation out there that, that shows you're respected, you're desired, and you're an asset to, to multiple people. Yeah. And that kind of just, you know, ties it back into what are some projects or a message that you want to leave out to the people that are you know watching this podcast or a message they can gain out of this what's that one message and what are some future things that you guys are working on that are coming up that you want to share with the world you know yeah well like i said before and i'll say it again don't be afraid to fail be afraid not to try and like really think about what that means don't be afraid to fail mm -hmm. like, fuck up man yeah. For real, that just, just fuck <laughs> up a lot yeah, yeah. you'll realize who you are as a person as a man, you know, if we're, if we're talking about men right now, you'll realize who you are as a person, as a man. It'll make you a stronger just person in your life uh, and be the best version of yourself for everyone around you. So just don't be afraid to fail. Say yes. I, I tell this to a lot of people. Like I have this yes man mentality. If I see a window opening for myself and I feel like I can learn something from there, I'll fucking jump through it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll go right through it and I'll try to teach myself as much as I can. And, and the, like I said before, if you're trying to get into the corporate world, you're trying to get a job, there's so many people out there. And I know friends of mine who will be on indeed.ca and they'll see a job that they love, but they're like, oh, they'll read one line for a qualification and they'll feel they don't have it. I'm like, just hit apply. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just hit apply. Yeah, yeah. Get yourself in the room Yo. yeah. and fake it until you make it. <laughs> Honestly, I faked it until I made it multiple times. Yeah. But I, I, you have to be willing to put yourself in uncomfortable you to sell yourself mm -hmm. and sell yourself true, so true. i think that's the the number one thing i can i can preach is just don't be afraid to fail be afraid not to try um and then in terms of what uh, we're working on we're working on some amazing things we've been working on a project with the edmonton valley zoo and the city of edmonton and the edmonton public school board for a year and a half where we're actually creating uh, a digital curriculum for elementary students teaching them about the animals mm. so basically i won this project 
uh, two and a half years ago and it was on yeah. hold because of COVID. We started filming it uh, early last year and we're on our, we just filmed our 10th video today actually. Oh, wow. So it's basically teaching elementary students about the animals and it's a virtual program. Mm -hmm. And basically uh, the elementary student teacher is going to go on the City of Edmonton website they can download uh, a video, a curriculum video on tigers, for example. Mm. A video will come on their projector. Following the video, uh, a, a call will go into a zookeeper live. Oh, wow. And the okay. zookeeper will talk to the, the students live yeah. after the course and answer any questions they want. Oh, wow. um, so we've been working on this project for a year and a half now. And we are going to be immortalized in... EPSB curriculum yeah yeah and teaching kids about animals so super cool very rewarding uh so we're going to leave our mark in that exactly. world which is awesome and and yeah just just you know learning to be a fractional advisor to a handful of great companies right now is is what my focus is um and again like I said going after quality not quantity yeah and and being exclusive to the people in our industry I think that's ethically how I will always run my business yeah, yeah. and then um you know as we're coming near to you know near uh, the podcast here um do you want to like do you, uh, if you have any like social media you want to mention or Instagram or that sort yeah I mean feel free to follow me at uh, <laughs> at your phrase. um I'm sure maybe we'll link some of the stuff in the caption <laughs> yeah, will, the yeah. curate collective is, is the business Luso is our water company please go try it to let us know what you think um it's being well received in the city. You know, we're from the we're from the Edmonton area, so it's easy for us to get into restaurants. But we'll soon be in different provinces. Yeah. Um. You know, shout out to Maserati of Edmonton, Alpha May of mm -hmm. Edmonton. Uh, incredible dealership. The staff are incredible there. Um. John is the GM. If you ever need anything, and then uh, what else? I mean, <laughs> I have a few things, yeah. but maybe we'll kind of link it in the caption. Yep. Um. Shout out to Alvin Ma, who's I'm an advisor to Hawkwood Capital. So we talk about investments. If you're looking for an investment, this guy's offering incredible returns on uh, on short term bridge loans for his clients. So that's a really great place for for investments to look into. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, Archetype Gym. I love that space. If you ever want to go to that gym, I can get you guys an experience pass to try it out. Um, you're looking to level up and be around a good community. Great place to be. Great place to network. Uh, you know, really, really love that space. And of course, Legacy Mortgages, who who I work with, I'm, I'm their branch strategist, uh, incredible group over there, large amount of mortgage brokers, very, very talented. And I sit on their leadership team as well. So okay. still in the mortgage space, yeah. still hold my license and I, I'll never leave the license, uh, but uh, love to be able to help families when I can. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, Curate Collective, my media company, uh, are definitely my focus right now. Um, but I'm very lucky to be surrounded by great people and, and be involved in a few different ventures. Yeah. Well, Shafraz, thank you for your time. We, I, we genuinely appreciate it. You appreciate know, as it, we bro. know, you're, you're very busy with your time. Oh, likewise, so, man. Yeah. Um, taking time out of your day to come do this podcast. I think everybody, um, you know, everything's running to my head. I mean, people can see genuine value from this and then, you know, put themselves in position to succeed in life. And there's no reason for not to go get what's destined for you. Yeah. So thank you for, uh, for coming, man. And uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you for the conversation. So yeah, yeah. appreciate it. Thanks right, guys. No, thanks for having me. I really yeah. appreciate it. Thanks, yeah. buddy. All right, guys. Thank you. Peace. <laughs>